Joining me now, the head men's basketball coach at Marshall, Tom Herring. Tom, good to see you again, my friend. Thanks, Ron. Pleasure to be with you. Last year, I had a couple of your games, and the one thing I noticed is I felt your team was in the process of maturing last year. Is it time to take another step forward? Well, there's no doubt. Uh, we, uh, we've got a group that now, and going on year three with me here at Marshall, I think there's a clearer understanding of what our expectations are day in and day out on and off the floor. And I think we've got guys now that have uh, a better appreciation for what we demand and what we want. And uh, our older guys uh, have been mm -hmm. really uh, have embraced a leadership role this offseason, and I'm excited about this uh, this group. One player that stood out to us, I think, last year, DeAndre Kane out of Shenley High School, if I'm not mistaken, in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Not that I'm from Pittsburgh, and I know that, but and, and the one thing I noticed is that number one, he's incredibly competitive. Yeah. Did he have to learn how to channel that competitiveness? Well, he still has to. He's not where we yeah. want him to be in that regard. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's continued to make good strides. You know, I say this a lot. You know, our best qualities are our worst qualities. Right. He's extremely competitive. Uh, he's an emotional young man. Now he's learning to channel, harbor, mm -hmm. and, and control his emotions and channel them in the right direction. And uh, he's gotten better and better. You know, he's obviously a very gifted player, can play anywhere in the country. Uh, but uh, clearly he's, uh, he's got to be a, he's, he's got to embrace and, and accept being a, a, more le a better leader. And I think he has this offseason. He's been the best shape of his life. He's worked harder than he ever has. So we're excited about uh, DeAndre along with the other older guys that are kind of the foundation of our program. You mentioned the older guys. Obviously, Dennis Tennant is, is coming back. He was granted an extra year of eligibility. He was one of the most uh, tenacious rebounders I have seen in a long time. Yeah, you know, obviously uh, it's something that we recruited. You know, we saw that from day one when we saw Dennis in junior college. And uh, he's a terrific story, but a great young man. Uh, he's taking advantage. He'll, he'll probably graduate maybe only need one class in the spring semester this this spring to, to, to finish up his degree. But, uh, you know, and uh, applaud the NCAA. Usually when you're dealing with the NCAA, you're begging for mercy. Right. We were just begging for justice. And uh, justice was served. He, he uh, He's helped lead us in rebounding in terms of being one of the more dominant rebounding teams in America. And he's probably arguably one of the best offensive rebounders in the country. When you went back after last season and you looked at the game tapes and, and you, you sat with your coaching staff, what stood out that you absolutely had to improve on this year? We've got to be a more committed defensive team in the half court. I didn't. I really was disappointed. I thought we we regressed a little bit uh, defensively. Uh, so we've got to, and we've got the personnel this year to be a really good defensive club. We've got depth. We've got length. We're really athletic. Uh, so we've got to be more committed defensively, uh, getting stops on a consistent basis. Uh, offensively, it's uh, cutting down on some of our turnovers, right. taking, taking better care of the basketball. Uh, we lose some guys that over their careers shot the ball very well. So perimeter shooting going into the season, I'm sure, will be an area that we've got to be concerned about uh, moving forward. Now, you went to the NIT. You have three straight 21 seasons. The bar has been set now. Is that translating to the players where now they realize the expectation of Marshall basketball. Absolutely, They're, and they should. We want to embrace that. I think when you have expectations, and obviously uh, we don't get too concerned with the external expectations right. that people place on us. It's more internal, but you know that usually means you have a chance. You know, when mm -hmm. you don't have expectations or people, then you know I, after twenty something years, I know that usually <laughs> is not a good indicator of, uh, of what you're what you're in store for. But uh, you know, we embrace that. You know, uh, you know, obviously when we came here, uh, Donnie did a great job. You know, laying down a foundation, right. uh, a foundation, getting some talent in the program. And now we've taken those great steps and. Uh, you know, it was the next. You know, it was 24 years before since uh, since the last Marshall team played in a significant postseason tournament. You know, obviously the NIT isn't our ultimate goal, but it was the next step for our program. And uh, I think our fan base is energized. Uh, we, I think we finished second or third in the conference in uh, attendance last year, which is again indicative of uh, the tremendous fans we have in, in, in our Marshall nation and also uh, the product that we're putting on the floor. I think also when, when you go to a tournament like like the NIT, or, or no matter what tournament you go to. The guys say, this is a pretty good reward. And it kind of sets a standard for them to push a little bit harder. There's no doubt. You know, I, I think we, we have to continue to appreciate the fact that we were in the NIT. I think what diminishes some of that maybe in our community is the fact that we were sent on the road in the NIT. Right. I think people maybe uh, uh, think a little bit less of that. Chance. But, you know, nonetheless, we, we were one of the teams that was selected to play in the NIT. Uh, clearly, again, I, I reiterate, you know, that's not our ultimate goal, but it was the next step for our program. And we knocked on the door of the NCAAs last year, and now we've obviously got to put ourselves in that position again this year and hopefully uh, eliminate any concerns or doubts that maybe the committee might have. Villanova, Kentucky, Cincinnati, West Virginia. Yeah, I, my, <laughs> my athletic director must have scheduled those when I was sleeping or on vacation or I was something going like to that. Ask so. there. No, uh, you know, it's, you know, we played, you know, our numbers speak for themselves. You know, last year we were the highest remaining RPI team in the, co in the country that was left out of the NCAA tournament. So we have a scheduling philosophy. Uh, we want to play really good teams. Uh, and clearly our, our schedule, you, and you mentioned some of them, and, and I know you were talking about some of the more name-recognized yeah, schools, but Ohio U is uh, outstanding. We go on the road there. Nevada comes to mm -hmm. us. South Dakota State with the Walters boys, you know, one of the best players in the country. So, you know, we're going to be tested from the get-go. But, you know, we're going to Villanova a few years removed from the Final Four. 
before. Yeah. Kentucky won the national title last year. Haven't lost a home game in Rupp Arena since John's been there. You know, West Virginia was in the Final Four a couple years ago, and Cincinnati's back. Mix got them in the Sweet 16, and it was, it was a great game for us. Uh, we beat them up there last year. One final question. How do you prepare your players to play at a Rupp Arena in places like that, or does it even matter to them? Well, we spent a lot of time this summer going to church and praying. <laughs> Because it's, it can be overwhelming for, for Well, players. fortunately for us, we, we've put our kids in those venues uh, each year. We, my first yeah. year, we played at Louisville in the Yum Center, uh, obviously yeah. a Hall of Fame. Last year, we went up to Kentucky, uh, excuse me, up to Syracuse and played mm -hmm. in the Carrier Dome against a, a, a dominant Syracuse club and played, played well up there. So we've been in those environments. You know, we played at Cincinnati last year. We've played in environments, albeit neutral, with West Virginia in Charleston. So our kids, I don't think they'll be shook or, or rattled going into those type of situations. And, you know, you want to put, you know, they want to play in those. And, you know, the kids are excited about playing those. Type of, those type of challenges, and uh, we welcome that. Hopefully our fan base appreciates how, how strong a schedule we're playing uh, because we have stepped up, and uh, we're, there's no sisters of the poor on, the, on our schedule this year, Ron. One final question. Yep. Obviously, we talked about Tin, and we talked about DeAndre Kane. Who's the one player that fans should keep an eye on that may surprise people this year? Well, getting a healthy Nigel Spikes back. You know, he played. Right. He really didn't play healthy at all. He got maybe 60, 70 percent last year, coming off a really good sophomore year, my first year. But, uh, you know, Chris Martin's vastly improved. Didn't play much as a freshman. Kareem Canty's a very talented talented freshman for us uh, coming in. And then uh, Didi Scarver's a, a, a scorer, a junior college transfer for us that's made a big impact so far. He can really score the ball, can really shoot it from deep. Uh, he's, uh, he's got a chance to – well, we're really deep. We've got a lot of depth, a lot of quality players, and uh, a lot of guys we're excited about. Good to see you. Best of luck this season. Coach. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate you.